Hello and welcome my beautiful brothers and sisters. Uh, this is going to be a channeled message at uh, the time. It's 11.20 p.m. and that's Eastern Standard Time. Today is August the 21st of 2018. We have officially entered into the 29th degree of Leo at the time of me recording this. Which means that we have one full day left of Leo energy before we slipped into Virgo season. And things get real. As if they haven't already been real. <laughs> um, the reason why I'm doing this video is because I just really felt a calling to do so. And that's even why I'm just doing a recording of my voice. I'm not showing my face or anything during this because it's not about me. It's about the message. And that's what I want you all to focus on is the message. And uh, it's kind of interesting because even though it's going to be a channel reading, I did look up some information for this and I'm kind of, I'm not surprised um, by what I discovered because there are no coincidences, but uh, this world is very magical. This universe is very magical and things just seem to work so, so, so just synchronized. Um, this, this message is really just kind of about the current energies and just some things I've been kind of mulling over myself. Um, I just got back from California. Um, it's been a long day. My back is hurting, like, a lot. Like, I, I don't know, I guess it's the way I slept last night. Like, my upper back is just, like, killing me. It's been killing me pretty much all day. Um, but I'm still here, so that's good. Uh, that made the plane ride back, even though we had plenty of space, it made it rather uncomfortable just because I couldn't get into a position to, you know, make it so I felt better. Um, but this video isn't really about that. I'm just saying that I, you know, I got back from California. Um, it's late. I'm a little tired. Surprisingly, I have a decent amount of energy. And I kind of wanted to talk about this message. And this is kind of spurred off of a couple of things. This is, um, we got back and ate food. Um, and during that time, we watched one of our favorite shows, me and my fiance. And then this show, um, one of the characters, uh, the victim, as you would say, um, it's like one of those crime shows. And she actually ended up killing herself um, due to being bullied and due to receiving all kinds of threats, you know, to her, to who she was. And that's kind of what I want to talk about, not necessarily suicide or anything like that but just how we relate to each other and realizing the importance of our communication with each other the effect we have on each other and really how that relates to the energy is going on right now so we do have mercury that has just gone direct which means that we are starting to communicate with our hearts more that aspect of our consciousness is back online communication in the mind um and since it's in the sign of leo we are learning to of course communicate with our hearts or we actually could be listening to our hearts more now um but i also want to talk about the fact that you know we still have six retrograde energies at the moment and one of the main retrograde energies i want to talk about is mars and i probably will make another video about this but I want to talk about Mars and its relation to Uranus right now because I think that this relationship is actually very important. I think it's very key. And you can even kind of talk about Chiron in the mix just because Chiron is in Aries. Um, and that's, you know, Mars ruler. You know, Mars rules Aries energy. Um, or you can say Aries is ruled by Mars energy. But I want to talk about this relationship between Uranus and Mars because I think it's a very important one as it relates to how we deal with the connection that we have to other people and how it really affects our self-worth and our self-value okay so we do have Uranus right now which is you know it's in Taurus for the first time in like 80 plus years or so and um, this is really of course speaking of us really finding new and unique ways to appreciate ourselves Appreciate our life, appreciate the small things in life, appreciate our luxuries, um, appreciate food, appreciate our bodies. So it's trying to find new ways to appreciate this world. Mother Gaia, the animals here, the creatures here, 
our fellow brothers and sisters. Because this is Uranus. This is talking about sign of the people, right? But it will retrograde back into Aries. Now, where's Mars right now? Well, Mars is getting ready to station direct at the sign of Capricorn. So what does this really mean? It doesn't really mean much, except for the fact that these energies are technically squaring each other. And squaring energies, even though for these, like you said, so Uranus is at 2 degrees and Mars at 28 degrees. So it's a 4 degree orb, but it's still significant. Why? Well, let's think about it. You know, Mars represents war, the person, the ego, action energy, getting things done. There's nothing wrong with the ego. But what happens is that sometimes, many times, we allow our egos to supersede our purpose and this innate, because it is innate, this innate desire to serve others, to serve God, to serve the universe, goddess, source, whatever you want to call it. Sometimes the ego gets in the way, and the ego is needed to get things done. So this whole idea that we need to just completely just, like, abolish the ego is it's actually um, counterproductive what we need to learn to do is to evolve the ego to evolve it to a new state of being a new place in many ways you know what Uranus and Taurus it does have to do with the self because if we really think about it the first you know four to five maybe even six signs of the zodiac I'm talking Aries through Virgo, although really mainly definitely the first, definitely the first three, and then the fourth one is when you start to kind of include other people more. But especially these first few signs, it really does deal with the self. And you're honest, is the sign of the people, which means that we are now looking at our collective consciousness as a person. And if you were to look at our collective consciousness as a person, what would you say about him or her? Is it healthy? Is it loved? Does it appreciate itself? Does it love itself? Does it believe in its own abilities to get things done, to push forward through any obstacle? Now, I will say that we as humans, as a collective consciousness, have been through quite a bit. I think, if anything, we definitely believe in our ability to dig ourselves out of holes. But do we believe in our ability to sustain peace and harmony and happiness? I think that's what's being called into question here. You see, I kind of went back and looked at it, and I thought this was very interesting, right? And, of course, you know, Uranus and Taurus is trining Saturn right now in Capricorn. Saturn is retrograde. So, and interesting enough, I'm, I'm pretty sure, and I can look at it, I haven't looked at it before I, I went into this video, but I guess I can right quick to see if Uranus will be retrograde before Saturn goes, oh no, see, look at that. Oh wait, oh, let's see, let's see, hold on. Uh, let's see, Uranus, well yeah. They're they're both retrograde, of course. So, but yeah, Saturn will come direct in September. So, but anyways, these energies right now they're actually trining each other exactly at two degrees. So this is rather important because you know Saturn represents hard work and effort. Um, right now it's of course in Capricorn, which it likes to be in Capricorn. It feels good to be in Capricorn, right? But it's also retrograde, so it's not at its full strength. You know, it's not at its full strength. But it will be coming forward within a month or so. But with this uh, training over to Uranus, this is actually offering us a great opportunity that through our hard work and effort, we can actually achieve a higher level of success, of prosperity, of abundance, material abundance, which I don't care who you are, we all do like material abundance. We wouldn't have come here if we didn't want to experience material abundance. Now that's not to say that you have to have 10 cars or five houses, but we all do like a certain level of material abundance, you know? 
and you know this could be a this could be a total generalization it really could be but someone who makes a hundred thousand dollars a year probably at least more than likely is probably happier than someone who makes 20k a year now that person who makes 20k could be the happiest person in the world could be doing what they love so I'm not, I don't want to just make this generalization and plaster it over the entire of you know the collective consciousness but that person who makes 100k more than likely is able to take care of themselves and their family in a far easier fashion than the person with 20k therefore reducing the amount of stress on that individual therefore increasing to their uh contributing to their overall happiness and satisfaction in life so to say that the people who are like completely non-materialistic i honestly i find it to be bullshit we all have earth energy so we are all materialistic on some level we all are now the question is whether you go overboard Uranus here is actually trying to find that happy medium. And that's what this trying to Saturn is. But we all are beautiful stars. Uranus does is the natural ruler of Aquarius. Aquarius rules the star card and tarot. We are all stars. We are all a cosmos. Superimposed, superimposed into this vessel. We came here to actually experience abundance, but that abundance can only really be truly experienced, truly experienced. When we come into our authentic self, when we remember who we are, why we came here in the first place. Now, that's just the thing. We have actually created a world, and we can recreate the world any way that we want to See, that's the thing. That some people think that the world is stuck the way it is, stagnant. It's always going to be a certain way, but it does not have to be because we are the creators of that. We are the designers. In many ways, Taurus. In many ways, Taurus is the designer. You know, if you're thinking about like building a house and like that, Taurus. In many ways, is kind of the designer. Capricorn can, in many ways, is the skeleton of things. It could be the frame of. The building or whatever you're trying to build of the house but in the middle of Capricorn is more like the director you know Taurus is people who actually get down on their hands and knees and actually build the thing Capricorn just directs it nothing wrong with that but this is us learning how to direct our lives in a more positive way in our world in a more positive way that actually benefits the entire collective and this is paramount. This is important right now. This time right here is very important. I want to talk a little bit about social media because I believe social media is really going to shift over the next 8 to 10 years, especially while Uranus is in this spot, especially while Chiron is in Aries because this is dealing with perceptions of the self and how we deal with the self, whether we believe in ourself, whether we try to achieve some image because we think we'll be accepted by others, but then we have to consider that Uranus is here, and if we really want to go deep into it, this is a semi-sextile between Uranus and Chiron that we are experiencing, and that we will experience over the next several years, this semi-sextile between these two uh, energies. Where Uranus represents, you know, the heavens, you know, the god of the heavens, and Chiron is kind of like, the person who wonders, the inner the being who wonders if they are worthy to enter into that heaven. Crazy, right? Of course, Chiron is trining Leo energy right now. Trining the North Node. This is a very unique moment, especially the rest of this year, where really, you know, we, we can we get caught up in the social media game and you know, it's crazy because people look at it, people are like, oh, there's social media warriors and there's a lot of you know, virtual bullying and all this stuff. Social media is relatively new. Think about this, guys. Think about how long humans have been around for and how short social media has been around for, or at least in this fashion. Social media has always technically been around, but in this facet, in this manifestation that we have it in right now, this is new. 
This is still revolutionary. This is still in its infancy. You can almost say it's even in the womb still. That's why there seems to be so much chaos and strife. Now the internet is great. Social media is great. But at the same time, there is this there are these kinks that we certainly need to work out. And we need to work them out because we have kinks within ourselves we need to work out. It's not the social media itself. It's us. We are the ones driving the social media, right? So the people who are trolls, the people who want to hide behind personas and profiles on these various sites to attack other people, it's not the site's fault. It's not social media. It's not Facebook's fault or YouTube's fault or Instagram's fault. It's us, the people. We're the ones that it allowed it and perpetuated these various ways of conditioning ourselves, thus causing particular traumas that force people to act out. But we are all human, right? Uranus and Taurus is squaring this Mars energy, which Mars has to do with itself, and it's in the sign of Capricorn. So now everyone's really concerned about how they appear in the world, career and legacy, and what will everyone else think, and am I successful enough, will I impress other people enough? You know what the interesting thing about all of this is? And I went and looked this up, I kid you, this is... This is how perfect astrology is. It's, it's incredible how accurate this system and this tool is. It's incredible. I love it. We have Mars stationing direct very soon, within a, probably about a week or so. And it'll be stationing direct at 28 degrees of Capricorn in the 37th solar minute. Now, Right now, we are experiencing something called the collapsing of timelines, where these various timelines are collapsing on top of each other. If you want to think of a visual, think of it. Uh, think of time as a as a um, as a spring. Instead of a straight line, think of it as a spring. And when you try and um, bring this spring together, the various circles, or they appear to be circles, come together and they get close to one another. So that's kind of what's happening right here. Mars is going to station direct at 20 degrees of Capricorn in the 37th solar minute. And the sign of Capricorn, the planet of the self, the ego, this action energy, and the warrior, will be really concerned about how they appear in the world. Heading back towards the Aquarius energy. So we can really start to enact this in the world and really become this person and hopefully be of service to other people when it comes out of its shadow phase. Now, what about Uranus? Uranus will station, actually, you know, it's not done with the Aries energy. That's the interesting thing about this. It's not done with the Aries energy. We, yes, we have to work on self-worth and that healing and our confidence and our value and revolutionizing the way that we see these aspects of our society and ourselves, but we still have to work on this action energy, this drive that Aries energy is, this drive. Uranus will station direct, my brothers and sisters, at 28 degrees of Aries. Now, I know what you're thinking, yeah, Uranus doesn't move that much, so it could be, you know, it, it's... Yeah, that, that's very possible that they would happen to station direct at 20 degrees respectively, even if they're in different signs. Even the, But they are both cardinal signs, which means that when you're on a station direct at 28 degrees, in the 36th solar minute, mind you, they are literally a minute off from each other. They are, they are that close. The Uranus station direct directly squares the Mars station direct, even though they are several months apart. Because the year, when you're on your honor station directs, it will be in January 6th. It will be January 6th, 2019. Mars stations direct in about a week. So yes, they will be a few months apart from each other. But if you know anything about astrology, if you know anything about time, if you know anything about aspects, you know that these 
this is still a critical moment. This this square actually is a very critical moment of both of these energies stationing direct at 28 degrees of Capricorn and Aries respectfully. This is a revolution. This is a revolution in the way that you see yourself, the way that we see other people, the way that we treat other people, the way that we value other people. This is a revolution and a revival in value. Where we actually see that everyone has potential. Everyone is worthy. Everyone, every single being has a purpose. It's sad that we sometimes project on the other people that they don't have a purpose or that they don't belong or they don't fit in to our particular paradigm. And maybe they don't, but they sure as hell do fit in to some paradigm. And the fact that they're even a part of this collective consciousness. Yes, there are different cultures and sects within this world. Everyone is a part of a cult. I don't care who you are. That's why, it's the root, or that's why it's the root of the word culture. We're all part of a cult. Whether it's like a spiritual cult, or a particular band, or a particular music that you like, or a particular food, a country, whether you even believe in countries, which I think that's another thing that's going to be brought up into question over the next eight years, the whole idea of what a country is, nationality. We all are part of a cult. The clothes you wear the cards you drive, even if you don't want to admit it, we all are part of a cult. Your favorite sports team, that's a huge one. That's a really big one. I consider myself a pretty special person, but I still like sports. I still love sports, I'm not going to lie. Um, fly goes fly. <laughs> but this is a very critical moment, guys. You know, each and every one of us has a gift. Each and every one of us has a purpose. And we all, I, you know, it's funny, I talked about this with my fiance on the way home. I just mentioned this, and I, I don't even know where this thought came from. I just thought about it. But I told her, I was like, you know what? We are that guy or that person to someone that when we walk in the room, they're like, oh, great, this bitch. Of this asshole. Like, we are that person. Like, no matter who you are, no matter how nice you consider yourself, no matter how, uh, spiritually advanced, quote unquote, you may consider yourself, no matter where you are in life, you are that person to someone where you walk into the room and they kind of have this energy of disgust. That's actually, um, a very shielded version of love because Really, it's that automatic energy, energetic exchange that you have with that person, even if you are unaware of it. It's actually them seeing an aspect of in within you that they simultaneously admire and simultaneously disdain. But we all are that person to somebody in the world. We are all that person to where Lily. You walk into the room. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're the nicest person in the world. I don't care if you donate to charities every day of your life. Obviously, you can clearly see in history that a lot of spiritualists, a lot of spiritual teachers, they were that person. They walk into the room and they're like, oh, great. He's here. She's here. Oh, great. <laughs> I don't know if that aspect will ever change, even if we do achieve a world of peace and harmony, which I believe is possible. But we certainly can get to the point where it's like, you don't have to necessarily speak to those individuals every day. Or at the very least, you can just be like, I hope you have a good day. You know? And even if you don't like that person and their beliefs and, you know, what they value and stuff, some people in this world value guns. Some people don't. Some people in this world value, you know, just certain aspects. Other people don't. It doesn't necessarily make one better or the other one not. But I think what this is is learning to respect each other but also, you know, this is like I said, this is training Saturn. And we have to consider Pluto's here too. So a lot of these old traditions are falling away. And we have to really 
this goes for everyone. This is not just, you know, a lot of these older, you know, ways of being that have been passed down. This is a lot of things that are coming to an end. A lot of things are coming to an end. And everyone is having to deal. Everyone is having to deal with these energies. We are all in this together, my beautiful brothers and sisters. Every single last one of us. Now, I made this video because I love you. I really do. And I love myself. I love myself so much that I, I make this video because, you know, that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to radiate love in whatever way it comes across, you know. I'm not perfect, you know. I'm not. I have my things. I have my vices. I have my things that I go to for comfort, you know. I don't have, I probably don't have the perfect health, but I'm pretty good. I, don't, I wouldn't say I'm bad, you know. No, I'm not the perfect son to my parents, but I do what I can. I absolutely do. I'm sure I'm not the perfect friend to my friends, but I do what I can. I'm pretty sure I'm not the perfect, you know, employee at work, but I do what I can. I think we all are. I think we need to acknowledge that. Just acknowledge the steps that we take every day, every single day. You know, that's really important. This is an important time to really... Learn to love ourselves again. You now, with all these energies and areas that have to really do with just ourselves, you know, we have Chiron and Aries. Come on now. Chiron and Aries, the wounded healer, the sign of Aries. How do we even initiate stuff? How do we get things off the ground? Aries is the rocket boosters, man, of the rocket. It's the rocket booster, rocket boosters. Some people are trying to just find a reason to get out of bed every morning. I know I've been there before. Trying to find a reason just to, you know, just trying to make it to the next day. And that's okay. It's perfectly okay. You might be there. You might have been there. You might have been there during, these, during this eclipse season that just passed. Oh, my goodness. What an intense, what an intense month of transformation. Two months. The past, this whole year. It's been an incredible transformation. We're really being set up for a great opportunity to really rock it into the future, I believe. I really do. And I, I believe in you. That's why I made this. I believe that you have the ability, the power, the love, the fortitude, the spiritual fortitude to do whatever the hell you want to do. <laughs> do whatever the hell you want to do. Of course, you know, I would say to make sure that you're helping other people. I know that sounds very simple, but that's what we're here to do. We're here to serve each other, you know? That's why I'm, that's why I'm making this video. I'm doing this to serve. So I'm not even showing my face in this video. It's not about me. It's about you. It's about the message. It's about love. You know, I think we've, and I don't think it's necessarily going to stop anytime soon, but I do think we kind of get the point as far as how we bullied each other for such a long time. We bullied each other into you know certain things, with, you know, wars and. What religion is the best and what thing is the best and there's nothing wrong with a good amount of competition here and there. I mean, I don't disagree with competition per se, but there has to be a way to revamp the way it looks so where we're not just hurting each other the way that we're doing. I don't have all the answers. I think in time these things will reveal themselves to us. That's why there's more than one of us here because each and every one of us carries a piece of that answer, a piece to the puzzle, you know? That's why there's more than one of us here. Even though we are all one, it's kind of an interesting thing. So the more you think about this stuff, the weirder it gets. But at the same time, it's like, it starts to make a little bit more sense. 
This is the time, my beautiful brothers and sisters, this is the time to really, really embrace who you are. Embrace love and move forward with courage, bravery. Belief that you will make it, can make it, have already made it. And that you know you're not because you're not you don't have to do what you don't want to do. Shit. And you also, you know, go by your own timeline. That's another important thing. Go by your own timeline. You don't have to do a certain thing by a certain point. Do what you do. And love it. Appreciate it. So what if you're a late bloomer to certain things? Who cares, man? I'm going to just be real and upfront with you all. Like, you know, I'm 20, what, I'm 26 years old right now. I'll be 27 on November. I lost my virginity when I was, what, 21? I think it was 20 or 21. And compared to a lot of people that I knew, that's late. A lot of people, you know, they had, they lost their virginity in high school. I was in my 20s. Who the fuck cares, man? <laughs> Who the fuck cares? Who are you trying to prove yourself to? Who are you trying to impress? Just be you. Just be you. That's really, that's what, that's all this is about, man. Appreciating yourself, loving yourself, and allowing yourself to be who you are in every given moment. That includes the times where you embrace your shadow, where you express your shadow. That's important too. Don't just don't just embrace who you are in the good times and the light times. Embrace who you are in the shadows. And yes, if you if you do feel like these are areas that you need to work on, because you you feel like if you go down a certain path that you know includes that shadow and you feel like it might lead to a certain demise or a certain way of being that you don't necessarily want, then sure, work on it, improve, but don't completely neglect like neglect that side of you. Because that's you as well. It's part of you as well, at least part of your experience. If you really peel back it, peel back all the layers and stuff, that's just what you're experiencing. You know, you're really you're truly infinite. You're truly everything. Infinite abundance. Truly, a lot of us right now are really much so, even those of us who tried to detach, a lot of us right now are really attached to our circumstances and who we are and our ego. That includes the air signs that are really that I really like to attach. The reason why I say that is because Uranus energy is retrograde, and while Mercury just went direct. We do have the South Node in Aquarius. South Node is really the physical manifestation of that energy, or at least what you can consider to be the negative pitfalls of that energy. And Aquarius is very much so a very detached energy, but the fact that the South Node is there means that we are very much so attached to this aspect of ourselves. So, it's hard right now to detach. I don't think anyone's really talked about this. It's hard right now to detach from our circumstances. It's hard right now to detach from our ego. It's hard right now to detach, to detach, excuse me, from our behaviors, what's happened in the past, our relationship with other people. It is really hard to detach from all that right now. It is hard to be objective right now. That's why a lot of people are struggling. That's why a lot of people in the spiritual community are struggling. Because they're trying to be objective, and it's really, really hard to. And that's okay. It's okay. I promise you, it's okay. I love you all. I encourage you to keep moving forward, to stay focused, and yahoo-hoo, smile often. <laughs> I encourage you to radiate love every day. I encourage you to place your hands on your heart every single day and smile and appreciate that moment. Appreciate all moments. Appreciate your fellow brothers and sisters. Appreciate everyone in your life. Even your annoying ass boss. Even that your annoying little sister or brother. 
I encourage you to appreciate all aspects, all beings, all experiences. That's why you came here, to experience it all. You are infinite after all, my beautiful, my, blah, my beautiful brothers and sisters. It's almost midnight. It's probably about time for me to check out, get out of here. I'll be back tomorrow with the uh, daily. Go ahead and see if I can get this uploaded before the night ends. I might fall asleep before it finishes rendering, but we'll see. But anyways, I love you all so much. Thank you for joining me on this video, this channel transmission. And radiate love every day. Radiate love in every moment that you can. Thank you.